Hey, good day. Um, yesterday, while fishing, we um, got ourselves into strife a little bit because uh, of a uh, an outgoing tide. You know, in a location where we know, you know, certain um, low tide levels. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of sandbanks, but they move around all the time. So sometimes you don't know uh, exactly. You know, you think you're going back into a spot um, where you gone through before you know a month before and then suddenly you find it wow you know there's a new sandbank there and we got sort of stuck twice uh, but the last one I got stuck was on the way back to the boat ramp and um, actually had to use the electric trolling motor to uh, to get us out of trouble and get us uh, back sort of toward, towards the ramp without having to sort of walk the water yeah so by running aground near the boat ramp we actually, uh, the motor actually stopped, okay, uh, because it was that deep buried in, you know, sort of sand and mud. Uh, consequently, it ingested a whole lot of that sand and mud and, you know, maybe tiny bits of gravel, stuff like that, blocking the telltale by the time <clears throat> I got home and I wanted to clean and flush the engine out. It just wasn't happening. Anyway, after doing a little bit of research on, you know, on YouTube, of course, and and uh, uh, Dr. Google, followed a few uh, forums, and came across a, uh, a clip done by a fellow named Skid Pig uh, from up here, uh, far north Queensland, and who had a very simple, concise video on how he cleared sand out of his engine. Now. Um, I did follow up a little bit further uh, to make sure that uh, that would be, you know, an okay thing to do for me on this particular engine. Uh, look, it's a fairly new engine. Uh, you know, I don't work on outboards. I'm, I've certainly worked on plenty of engines in my lifetime. Um, and uh, I'm not adverse to actually trying and learning something new. So this is not a how-to. This is how I addressed the problem with trying to clear sand from my engine and I pretty much followed <coughs> Skid Pig's uh, uh, way of, of, of doing this um, and um, to that effect I also say thanks for a tip man that was really good because I do believe it was successful anyway watch and tell me what you think so there's a little boat that goes up in here, uh, which you know keeps this uh, this cover on. So I'll just push that forward and get take it off like so. So the thermostat sits behind here. Um, there's a bracket in front of it that holds a cluster of uh, of wiring. So I will try and carefully take that off. Mind you, uh, you know, I've never done, any, uh, done this before. I've worked on engines before, but um, I am going to try it. I'm using a little quarter inch um, drive here, so as not to put too much pressure on these little bolts, because we don't certainly don't want to snap them. Okay, there's one. There's another one right here. Um, take that off. So there's these neat little uh, little clamps here. I might just that hold this wiring on there. I'm not sure if I actually have to take these off to give myself a bit more room. So, because I'm supposed to be running the motor, uh, I'm not really sure whether, um, you know, I mean, there's no way I, I should disconnect these here because it will stop the engine from running. Um, but what I might be able to do is to, to get this bit of wiring out of the way that way because water will be coming to spit out. I'm not sure how the wiring is going to cope, you know, because it's electrics. 
with uh, water spitting on uh, onto it. Um, so just. Um, yeah, trying to get this away from there. So, sorry. So I can actually um, open this up because there's going to be water pissing out of this. So what I did decide to do is actually remove the um, cover of the thermostat. I'll just loosen them individually. first and incidentally um, these bolts are not really too tight which you know gives me an indication too that um, shouldn't tighten them too tight when doing them back up again okay. so just take a note that these bolts are longer than them, so these are for the thermostat. So I will keep them separate. What's amazing is that the amount of crud that's actually in there, despite the fact that I religiously clean um, my um, flush the motor and use a product called Salt Away. Maybe this is from yesterday, I don't know. So I have decided to uh, give this a go. I might put a little bit of plastic around this here to sort of keep that covered. So I've also decided to remove uh, these uh, little covers here, just to allow more water. Uh, the, I guess they're like a uh, like a filter cover. Yeah, so that's them right there. I've decided to wrap a little bit uh, of Glad Wrap around that. I'm probably going to give that, you know, um, yeah, at least a couple of more. Okay, so I've zip tied that as well, and I'm thinking I actually pull it up, uh, make sort of making sure that the, you know, they're not gonna not gonna get tangled up in the flywheel, um, and that water should just then shoot out this way here. Um, anyway, that's the theory of it. Right, oh, so I've got some compressed air here, and. Um, I'm going to have to start her up and get some water to the muffs. Alright, we do have water coming out. And, no, and there is nothing coming out of there. nothing coming out of air. So I got this hack on YouTube from Skid Pig. Have a look at his channel. Um, so hopefully this this will work because um, you know um, I don't really want to have to take it into a shop, you know, for a five hundred, six hundred dollar, you know, bill because I had to do this and do that, blah blah blah. Um, I'm going to put it back together and hopefully that telltale will work. So most importantly now is to not, you know, apply undue pressure, just shut sort of firmly, like so, and that one as well. 
sort of try and guesstimate, you know, a similar pressure to what uh, you used, I used when I took it off. Okay. All right, guys, so this is the moment of truth. Um, let's start her up. Thanks, good pig. Absolute terrific hack.